Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren Camille. If this is your first time here, if it's not your first time here, then hey girl, hey, welcome back. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And obviously, I feel like if you're here today, it's because somehow, some way, you are either on a self care, self help, self betterment journey, or you're wanting to get into that. As the seasons change towards the end of the year, I think it's very natural for all of us to go into this state of reflection and if you're looking back on your year thus far and it really didn't go as you would have hoped, uh, you didn't get all of your to-do lists done, didn't mark off everything on your vision board, I do want you to know that that's okay. This is definitely not a place where I'm gonna bash you for that, but um, you might wanna come a little bit harder next year and I'm in the same boat. So really this is just gonna be some open conversation about that. And of course I would love to hear y'all's opinions in the comments. So let's keep the conversation going there, okay? Today I wanna kinda talk about a couple of things. I honestly probably should have organized this a little bit better, but I just wanted to just go up top of the dome if I'm being completely honest and the notes that I took a couple weeks ago. So I guess if I had to give a title to this video, it's going to be something like habits to ditch so that you can really become your best self in 2024. Habits to ditch so that you stand on business in 2024. Yeah, I like that. Anyway, let's just talk. We don't have to be so serious. Let's let's just talk, okay? So, um, so the first habit that I want us to ditch is giving yourself too much grace. Honestly, I feel like I fall victim to this all the time. And when I have conversations with my loved ones, I realize a lot of people fall victim to this. And I think we're in such an era of self-care, self-help, and being like really kind to ourselves, which don't miss the message here. I think that it is super important to be kind to yourself. And I do think that it is important to give yourself grace because if you're always um, feeling disappointed when you don't reach perfection, that's not a healthy state to live in either. However, when you get to a point where you're always allowing yourself grace to the point that you basically manipulate yourself into thinking your laziness is okay, because being soft with yourself, giving yourself soft love, um, essentially you are tricking yourself out of your own position and giving yourself excessive amounts of grace and standing on your boundaries they don't go together they just don't go together as much as you would like them to sometimes um, you have to do things even when you don't feel like it sometimes you just have to power through things and girl that is such a lesson for me to learn but what really sets me up for success is making a plan, not just always thinking that I'm gonna base every day off of how the previous days were and that I'm just gonna go with the flow and that I have the routine set in my head so I don't need to like write anything down. Like not writing stuff down is the number one way to not stay on business. I'll just put it like that. And a number one way to give yourself too much grace because if you don't know what first thing you're gonna do when you wake up, you don't wake up having a plan for your day knowing like I'm gonna get the most of my morning by getting myself a really healthy balanced breakfast, moving my body, finishing with all of this by this time I'm gonna do my hair makeup put on clothes and sit down to work at this time I'm gonna have a change of scenery on this day I worked from home all last week and I'm getting a little burnt out if you don't plan ahead you're going to slip up on your boundaries and you're going to give yourself too much grace because you'll easily start to feel overwhelmed and with feeling overwhelmed can have like you know all those voices in your head I'm gonna insert a video actually right here that I just saw today that made me think of this. Being lazy, we need to shower. We have to get up, get up, get up, clean the fish. Being lazy, we have to do you got dishes to do? Did you make that bed? Switch up the laundry. Still have to do that. You're over. Stop being lazy. We have to do this. Your insurance. When you get to that point, yes, you know you have a lot of things to do. Yes, you might have some type of concept in your head of what needs to be done. But because you don't have a plan, because you can't see what the first step is, you might not take any steps at all. And that ultimately leads to you feeling discouraged, being not proud of yourself. And that spills over into other ways. In order for you to be on the up, you have to create a series of good habits, stack them. And when you feel that sense of accomplishment and you gain that momentum from that, you really have to just ride that until you get to where you wanna be. So, okay, and that brings me to the next habit that I want us to ditch, which is rebelling against routine. Maybe some of you aren't like this. Maybe I'm the only person in the world that's like this, but I doubt it. I really notice I thrive off of structure. I thrive off of routine, but something in me wants to not like it so bad. Something in me wants to go with the flow. Something in me wants to 
be able to just kind of go through the motions of each day and let every day be a little bit different. And to a certain degree, everything is okay. But also the type of life that I desire to live is gonna require me to have a lot of structure and to still get up early on the weekends sometimes, to still put in work, to still say, yeah, I'm tired, but 30 more minutes towards this to set me up for success the next day. And when I break from my routine, y'all, everything starts to go down because it can be a little bit of a domino effect. And when I say routine, I, it shouldn't be a scary word. It should actually be something that you look at as a helper to you, something that's going to allow you structure. Routine is the thing that allows you to have all the time you need to get your work done. And routine is also what allows you to have the time to spend with your friends, to have the time to do nothing on certain days because you schedule that in, because you stay up on certain things in the way that you're supposed to. So really just not rebelling against routine. And then that kind of takes me into shifting your perspective on things. Like at the end of the day, if you do not make the active choice to change your mind about the way that you are thinking about things, your reality will not shift. It just won't. You have to give yourself acceptance for where you are, even if it's not a place that you want to be or that you want to remain. And you have to try to find the silver lining in every single situation because gratitude and routine and making changes is the only thing that's going to push you forward in life. And so many times I try, I feel like to find different routes to get to the same destination. And I'm not just gonna get there by chance. Without a plan, without structure, without routine, without everyday small habits that lead to the bigger picture, you will not make it to that destination. Another terrible habit that I want us to ditch this year, I'm so guilty of this, is feeling like you need to consistently gather information. I am such the, oh, I need to have a plan for this and I need to do this now. I know that might seem like it's contradicting to what I said before because you do need to have a plan, but I can be the over planner. I can be the person who is, um, you know what, let's not even call it over planning. At, at a certain point, you're just collecting information. Okay, like, okay, I'm gonna do some research on this. And then after I do the research, now I know how to be a productive person with a great morning routine. Now I know these things. Now I know what workouts I should do in the gym. Now I know what type of foods I should be eating and what type of foods I shouldn't be eating in order to get this body goal that I have. Okay, you have all this information just stored up. What are you gonna do with it? How many recipes do you have saved on Instagram? How many workout routines do you have saved on Instagram? How many just different piles of information have you collected but have not put into action any of those things? Because I do that. I've done that. I don't do that anymore. I'm changing my language too. I have done that in the past. I don't do that anymore. You don't need to keep gathering information. You have all the information that you need. Now you need to start putting plans into action or stop complaining or stop complaining. And you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna stop complaining, right? You know, make it make sense, right? So yes, it's good to gather information. Yes, it's good to do research, but even go as far as putting that into your routine. You know, maybe one day of the week you can sit there and plan out that passion project or that vacation or this really big task that you want to get taken care of. But you don't need to sit there and research that every day for a month. At some point you've gathered enough information and it's time to just go forward with it. And that is also going to require some courage on your part, some confidence on your part and to trust yourself. And if you're at a place where you don't trust yourself to make decisions, then that is something else that we can dive into at another day and time. But you have to gain that confidence and know that at the end of the day, you are the person that's in control of your day in, day out task. You have to start making executive decisions. You have to show up as a CEO of your own life. And that's just that on that. If you don't like being in control, that's unfortunate. What are you going to do about it though? You're going to make the choice to give the control to somebody else, or are you going to go ahead and continue to accept your responsibility and do something about it? The next topic that I want to touch on um, is I want to talk about being stimulated. Coming off of quarantine day, we had a major life, a lifestyle change, right? Like going from being able to be outside all of the time to being stuck indoors, not being able to see your loved ones and things like that. You are missing certain stimulation. So a lot of us started finding stimulation from um, vices that maybe aren't so good for us, right? And 
I notice, and not just for myself, speaking from my friend group and multiple conversations that I've had with people in all different walks of life, that period of isolation could either be really great for you or it can be detrimental to you depending on how you use that time. But when you get very used to stimulating your mind and your body in a certain way all the time, you can form habits that might not always support where you wanna be. So let's just use drinking alcohol, for example. If you were someone who started during that period of isolation enjoying drinks at home when you usually would only enjoy drinks out socially, you might have noticed that it made you gain a little bit weight. It made you be a little bit less motivated. It interrupted your sleep cycle. Um, it caused you to just view things differently. And then it also caused you to have the desire as soon as you get bored to do something to no longer be in the state of boredom because you don't want to feel that feeling, right? So you're trying to do anything to take yourself away from it, but we need to kind of replace what's stimulating us with things that are gonna be healthy for us in the long run. Anything that is a very temporary stimulation for you, you need to consider maybe pulling back on that a little bit because then we get to a place where we forget what it's like to be in a a natural state of mind and you get addicted to releasing dopamines and endorphins in negative ways where you're always chasing that but you need to find ways to get those same effects but in healthier ways so by listening to music by going to the gym by maybe having a conversation with a loved one by enjoying something that's uh, light-hearted and humorous you can still get those same effects but stay away from those vices that are not so good for you. And I think a lot of times y'all know, myself included, that vices aren't good for you, but we again, make excuses, give ourselves too much grace and well, I'm stressed and we'll listen and this and this and this, and this helps me with this. And if I don't have this, I don't sleep as good and this is this. But I want us to start being honest with ourselves in the next year, you know? Um, and that might look like, yes, I like this. And yes, I might find an, a space and time to enjoy these things, but yeah, I probably am overdoing it a little bit too much y'all probably need to stop vaping. You probably need to stop drinking every day of the week. Probably need to start, stop participating in some of the other things that you're participating in because as much as you wanna think that those things are not affecting you, they are, they're holding you back. You probably need to stop eating at two o'clock in the morning. You probably don't need pizza every time you leave the bar. If these things are taking you further away from your goals, then those are things that you really need to reevaluate. And I think if you start, again, going back to shifting your perspective, looking at things in the bigger picture, full spectrum, like how does this affect me in a day's time, in a week's time, in a month's time, in a year's time, if I could keep it up. That's a good way, I feel like, to kind of keep things in balance. And it's okay to have those days that feel boring and mundane because a lot of the times those are the days that are going to push you the furthest ahead. And when you do limit the times that you allow yourself to have all of that stimulation, it really does make it seem more worthwhile. Because it's like if you have even your favorite restaurant every single day, after about having it 30, 40 times, you're like, this is not good today. Like it did not hit. You remember those times when you went to Chipotle for two weeks straight in college and then when you had it again, it just did not hit. But then when you haven't had it in like three months and then you have it, you're like, this stuff is so good. It's the same way with concepts for your life that you're always using for stimulation. Too much of anything is a bad thing, okay? Another bad habit that I want us to ditch is people pleasing and hear me out. I would have told you that I'm not a people pleaser until recently in the last month, I've come to this revelation. Is that the word? I don't know. I've kind of had this aha moment because there have been two or three events that I've been invited to and I wouldn't mind going, but it's not something that was really a strong desire of mine but because of a friend inviting me and me knowing that they wanted me to be there and not wanting to let them down i would try to find ways to make it happen but i would feel this kind of like anxiety in my chest because the days that they invited me to do the things they were inconvenient if i did it i would have to sacrifice showing up on youtube i needed that time to film or edit and i would start kind of bargaining with myself like okay maybe if I do this and if I do that, then I can make this work and I can get that done for myself and then I can get this done for my friend and then I can get this done. And now why am I even going? Because now I'm stressed about going to something that I don't even really want to go to. My friend wants me to go and yes, I want to show up for them. And yes, it is good to want to be there for your friends, but at the cost of me 
having anxiety about showing up and potentially having to sacrifice my work that's going to put me behind all so that I can say I showed up for them that night. If they're really my friend, shouldn't I have the opportunity to be honest with them and let them know that doing this is going to not be as great for me. It's not as convenient for me. Um, but that's, is that not me wanting to please people because I'm putting their needs before myself? And sometimes, you know, every blue moon, you can make a sacrifice like that. But if you get to a place where you're always considering how someone else feels so much so that you'll put yourself on the back burner, you've created a really negative, um, relationship and that's not going to be beneficial for anyone, which leads me into the next habit that I want to drop. And that is y'all do not tolerate things from yourself that you wouldn't tolerate from other people. Let me say it again. Do not, do not tolerate things from yourself that you would not tolerate from other people. Would you be okay with someone making plans with you and then consistently canceling because they just didn't feel like it? And, oh, I thought I was gonna do this, but I didn't wake up early enough. And, oh, this and this, this, they come with all of their excuses. And an excuse is an excuse, whether it's a good one or a bad one, an excuse is an excuse. Um, you wouldn't wanna deal with that. You wouldn't wanna deal with someone who flakes on you all the time who doesn't honor their word, who is inconsistent, you wouldn't want those type of people to be around you. We have these expectations for romantic and platonic relationships. Um, and we know what we're looking for. We have this long list of standards that we hope someone will check off. But when it comes to how you show up for yourself, are you giving yourself those same type of checklist you know are you lazy are you considerate are you consistent are you kind do you make a lot of excuses like the list can go on and on and on but i just want you guys to remember to not let yourself get away with things that you wouldn't let other people get away with if you would hold your friend to a higher standard and be like girl you know you're better than that and that's trifling don't be that way hold yourself to that same standard don't be that person who gives out advice but also can't take it. And uh, this might be the last thing that I wanna touch on, but um, stop seeking approval from others. I'm so bad at this, or I can be so bad at this of, what do you think of this? And like, should I do this? But like, what? I just want your opinion and I just want this. And um, it's something that I'm gonna have to consistently work at. But like I mentioned earlier, you have to have the confidence in yourself to realize that you are the CEO of your life. You're writing this story. Um, along with the help of God. But I just wanna leave you with this, okay? You can do hard things, things that will take years and things that require thinking and require planning, things that you've seen other people do, you can do those things too. Like you have to show up with structure, you have to have a plan, you have to have confidence. For me, and I think for you too, whether you believe it or not, you're gonna need some guidance from a mentor, loved ones, God. Um, you really can't do everything alone. It's okay to need help, but you can do things that are hard. And um, if you want all these things, you have to show up and you have to give God something to bless. And um, there have been a lot of things that didn't go like I wanted them to go this year, but through this state of reflection, I'm just finding ways to be grateful because so many things have gone right and so many things uh, needed to play out the way that they played out so that I can get the lesson so that I can learn from this and I feel also so that I can come to you guys and speak with you all about it because I know I'm not the only one who you know can be in a state of reflection that causes you to feel maybe a little disappointed in some ways and maybe a little bit excited for the future because tomorrow's a new day so just because you didn't reach those goals by the time frame that you thought it's not over yet girl and you still have a lot of opportunity but show up and give something, give God something to bless and remember that you are capable of doing hard things and you're not alone. So hopefully, even though this video was a little bit disorganized, it was helpful to someone. I know I haven't done a sit down video like this in a while. So if you are still here at the end of the video, then thank you so much for watching till the end. And let me know if you guys wanna see more content like this. Give me a topic if you want. I can really come like a little bit more organized, but I just wanted to just show up today while these things were on my heart to speak about. So if you're still here and you are not subscribed, please subscribe like this video give it a thumbs up because it really helps push me in the algorithm so that more people can find me and i can find more people like y'all so anyway love you and see you in the next video bye and watch me over until my